Hi friends. Um, I'm here today with with Vicki. Uh, she's wanting to be held today uh, for whatever reason. Um, so I thought I would indulge her and do a quick video chat continuing on the topic more or less of uh, social construction in movies that I just recently did a um, a video on, um, but I feel like there's still a little bit more to more aspects of that topic to maybe um, talk about that I didn't cover in that previous video, just due mainly to time. So one thing I did want to start by saying is when I left off in the previous video, I think I had made the point that um, I felt like Birth of a Nation, the movie The Birth of of a nation back from back like a hundred years ago that it had changed and the perception of the culture towards it had changed and you know it's such an old movie it's a silent movie um, I'm not sure that we can say that the cultural view of it has changed I tend to think it more or less has it has at least for large segments of the population because this movie was very popular at the time if you don't know the background of it um, it's it's interesting to um, to read about so you could do a Google search and find out more about it but when the movie came out it was very popular it was um, it sort of set the bar for um, for filmmaking at the time but it had some very troublesome parts to it uh, specifically related to um, to race and racism and it portrays the Ku Klux Klan as a noble organization and so um, that was sort of this movie sort of solidified at the time this sort of neo-confederate remaking of the the Civil War to be a, in a different to frame it differently in the in the in the um, American culture where um, it was the South on a certain level had been actually wronged um, and were the victims um, of of the North in some ways so this portrayed the Ku Klux Klan as sort of being this noble organization that sprang up to protect. Uh, Southerners, Southern women, uh, in particular, from freed slaves, um, basically. So it's been a long time since I've seen it, but I think that's basically it. And you know, from what I've read after this movie, um, this movie was part of a bigger trend. So it didn't it didn't necessarily create this trend, but it reinforced this trend to to remaking the the. The story of the South, and during this time, this 1915-ish to you know the, into the 19, early 1920s, there was I think record lynchings. Um, there was a lot of violence done against African Americans at that point, as the as the hold of the South over and the segregated South became ever more powerful, and you know began to actually create this new myth of itself as. Um, um, that I discussed in the previous video that was later reinforced, I think, by the movie um, Gone with the Wind, which portrays this Southern culture, uh, Civil War era culture that is a noble. Uh, people are, tend to be no, they've been uh, ennobled. Um, the characters um, like uh, Ashley, um, Rhett even, um, they're honorable people. Uh, Melanie, um, and their cause is seen, uh, which is the Civil War, the Southern cause is seen um, somewhat sympathetically from their point of view um, because we're shown as the audience how much they suffered um, during the, the war and uh, that they all had noble, a noble spirit. Um, or they were they were noble people. They were honorable people. So it completely whitewashed, uh, so to speak, um, the whole slavery issue, where the actual slaves in the, in the movie are portrayed as um, sort of content with their condition, and um, other than that, the um, 
slavery is not really even addressed. So, which is ultimately, of course, what the South was fighting for. So anyway, I wanted to clarify that because I, when I ended on that note on the previous video, I think I gave the impression that I thought, oh, well, you know, Birth of a Nation's kind of gone out of its, um, it's now seen as this racist movie. And I'm not sure that everyone sees it that way. I mean, it's not a movie anymore. So it's a silent movie from 100 years ago, so it's not like it's a movie that you see on the late show on TV getting replayed all the time. So its impact on the culture is much less than it originally was back when it came out. But I do think that the um, neo-Confederate story that it's telling is still very, very strong in our culture today in the United States. And I think we see this all the time. Um, most recently, uh, this past summer of 2015, um, with the situation with the Confederate flag in um, various places and the uh, conversation that was started after the shooting at the church in Charleston um, about the place of the Confederate flag and, um, and Confederate monuments and sort of the backlash that we heard um, from some segments of white Southern, uh, the white Southern population about defending, you know, their heritage. Um, and, you know, I think one thing I really found interesting in that whole concept, and it's kind of related back to this, what I'm saying, is that when that happened, um, I, I, you know, I saw comments that it's Southern heritage, it's part of Southern heritage, and, and um, I think that, you know, they were what they really meant to be saying in those instances was it's part of white southern heritage because um african-american black southern heritage is completely has a different story to tell and um so i think that when people were speaking of southern heritage they um they really mean white southern heritage and i think on my previous video i think i just call them southerners and i didn't specify white southerners but i do want to clarify here that there are multiple racial groups and ethnic groups that are southern not just white people um so in the previous video and now i'm specifically talking about white southerners so I think that's all I, you know, I, I just wanted to clarify those issues um, left over kind of from the previous video. And um, I think it, I really had that on my mind that I wanted to, to clarify. And I didn't particularly want to pull the previous video um, and do it over. I just um, I feel like I, it was fine to just do a clarification here. So, um, but on to the rest of the topic that I want to discuss here was... It got brought up in the previous video. It's sort of at what point do our cultural forms like movies in particular and TV as well, at what point are, are they always, do they always reinforce the, the, um, the, do they always socially construct, um, and hold us back from, uh, maybe remaking our culture faster? Um, are they more hindrances in some ways or helps? Or are they irrelevant? You know, I think these are all really important and interest, very interesting questions to ponder. And so one thing that I think of, you know, I, I don't have cable TV, but what I do have is I have a digital antenna. So when having a digital antenna, if you have one of those, you see, you know, you have these kind of odd local stations that you get. So one of those that I get here where I live is called Grit TV. And so Grit TV is largely, you know, a lot of Westerns and this sort of thing. And um, their tagline on their commercial one time I heard uh, one of their promo spots for the, their channel, it said TV with backbone. And so, you know, it's this male rugged voice and it says TV with backbone. And, you know, they show a lot of... Um, they, like I said, they show a lot of westerns, and I one thing I do enjoy, just sort of enjoy on a on a certain level. It reminds me sort of of my childhood, is these westerns from the '60s. So you know, Laramie, Cheyenne, um, The Rifleman, um, The Big Valley, um, Bonanza, which I don't particularly like, but you know. 60s westerns but these 60s westerns you know they're just fraught with with cultural um 
cultural sort of ideas that I don't necessarily want to see replicated in the future. They exhibit toxic masculinity to the nth degree a lot of times. Um, you know, there's definitely uh, some issues with gender there. Um, there's some racial issues because races, the um, blacks are almost non-existent in the, sh in the shows, as well as other other groups. I think on one episode of Cheyenne one time, there I saw they were doing target practice and they had drawn a Native American Indian, you know, with a headdress, and that's what they're using for target practice. So this kind of thing is not, um, these types of things are not uh, what I would like to see replicated in our culture in the future. But, you know, I think in a way they are, they're social constructions that help to reinforce that sort of idea that has been dominant in society um, for a very long time. And so I think that, you know, by this channel using this term, um, TV with backbone is, is really illustrative of of that because it's appealing to a certain type of, you know, man, um, and it's and it's appealing to a certain type of man um, through a through a certain type of masculinity, what I would call um, largely toxic masculinity, uh, which I have done a video on before as well. So you know, there's that, and then there's you know another another uh, genre that I really you know can enjoy is film noir from like the 40s and 50s and this genre also has some social constructions in it that um i don't want to see replicated in the modern day you know smoking is 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 glamorized in these movies um the, there's definitely there's a gender bifurcation there's a gender binary because there's usually you know the femme fatale and in um in, in, a, in noir, there's usually, you know, kind of this hard-boiled guy, streetwise guy, world-weary guy sometimes. And so I'm not, I, I know, and I think I think film noir is, is a wonderful art form for that period, you know, that, illustri that, that tells a certain story a certain way. But then it also, I have to say, it reinforces some of these stereotypes. You know, gays don't exist in these movies at all. They're just, they're invisible people. Um, ethnic minorities largely don't exist except for to support the, the dominant, you know, white culture um, through ser being servants or in the case of sometimes in, um, in noir takes place in San Francisco or whatever, they will have uh, maybe Asian Americans or, or Chinese um, immigrants and they're, you know, some, some, a lot of times somewhat presented somewhat as their stereotypes, meaning sort of like nefarious and sneaky and um, sort of exotic and in the, in the shadows. So, um, you know, I just think that there's aspects of film noir too that, that, that that actually reinforce the dominant um, culture um, and gender problem, gender issues, and um, orientation, sexual orientation issues, definitely racial issues, definitely masculinity issues. Um, so I think these types of cultural um, artifacts now really need to be uh, watched with this sort of idea of social construction in mind like a critical view of oh you know okay so that you you don't necessarily you're not necessarily influenced by them to reproduce the the more negative aspects of of when they were the more negative aspects that were prevalent when they were produced originally so anyway i hope that that made a little bit of sense maybe um it you know, I had that on my mind after I finished the previous video, so I just wanted to, to put that out there as well. So, hope you uh, enjoyed it. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next time.